You're about to meet nine individuals who have dedicated over 40 years of their lives to working in health. Join them as they reflect on 40 years of hard work, change and friendship. And join us in thanking them for their incredible contributions to caring for the coast. I'm Chris. I'm Alison. I'm Peter. I'm Steve. I'm Marilyn. I'm Gary. I am Eleanor. I'm Bev. I'm Stuart. Yeah, so, so pretty much my auntie, who I had a lot to do with, was a matron of a nursing home, so pretty much that's probably why I would pursue this career. It, it, it's a familiarity for me, because I've always been around those institutions. Um, my father worked at Lincoln Hospital. My, my grandfather was very big in first aid and helping people in the, when he was in the railways, and I wanted to do something that was out there helping people. When the computerisation came in, my boss assigned me to the computer team. I don't know anything about computers because it back in my mind at that time, you know, you think of Star Wars, all these lights flicking around. <laughs> all the nurses back then, they had the blue uniforms with the, the white pinafore. Yeah, and they used to actually live on the premises, a lot of them, because they had nurses' quarters. And... The, biggest, the biggest change in my career definitely would have to be going from a typewriter on your desk to getting a computer. It's equality because in those days the wardsmen were all men. There was no ladies allowed and they used to uh, shower all the male patients where the nurses were all female and they showered all the female patients. It's changed a lot because it's now a lot more multicultural. When, and when you're in the beginning in the 80s, it was men were all the management there was nurses or females, there were some males, and most of them were doctors. Maternity leave, and back then we had to work, like we didn't get just paid for maternity leave. If you took maternity leave, you actually had to come back and make up the hour, the days that you were off. Computerisation has the biggest change that I've seen in my career. Probably the biggest change has been deinstitutionalisation, moving from the big hospital systems into the community and providing community services. Yeah. So technology and how we operate is, is really jumped. Um, when I first started, um, people would come in for a, um, a gallbladder operation. They'd be in hospital for two weeks and they had a fairly big scar. Nowadays, we do a keyhole surgery and they're home within two days. Oh, I don't know if I should say anything. Oh dear. Um, in the 1980s, it was a different, different place. <laughs> when I first joined the social club, it was 10 cents a week. We had a swimming pool, a gym, um, down the back there, used, and a tennis court. There used to be a lot of barbecues, parties down there in the afternoons. And also Easter time, one particular lady used to almost put a Hugh Hefner bunny suit on with a little cotton tail and go around delivering eggs all the way around the hospital. Christmas time, the general manager come down and got some alcohol bottles of beer and, and whatnot and went around all the hospitals to give it out for Christmas parties throughout the hospital. <laughs> I don't think you'd get away with that these days. <laughs> it was all fun, but now you wouldn't be able to get away with it. We used to have to line up to get paid and we used to, like, you'd look out the door and see how many were lined up. They counted out our money then and we had to actually sign for it, yeah, in cash. We actually got paid in cash, a lot of things. Yes, patients could smoke, we used to give them ashtrays in the rooms. Well, I always think about living in the moment more than anything. Be confident of what you're doing and you will shine. Just don't be afraid to learn new things. Yeah, when given the opportunity, just take it, yeah. Treat patients as, as they're somebody's, keeping in mind that they're someone's important relative. And I try to treat them how I would like my relative treated. If you can't adapt to change, don't come into health. That was always sort of really special, particularly sort of the first, first baby you delivered. Um, and I suppose just making a difference to people. I love working in the hospital here. It's a very friendly hospital. The staff are really good. Uh, I like the interaction with the patients. Uh, and you actually got to be like a part of their family in some cases. The interaction with the hospital staff and able to assist them. 
I think we do a lot of good work and I, my job, a lot of my job is explaining to people what is not mental illness. That this is a normal reaction, you've got to validate people. Sometimes just listening to people for an hour, which is hard sometimes, um, or a half an hour, um, nobody's ever listened to them. And then you get the people who are really, really petrified and sort of stuff. So you get the tissues out for them and you know, you say, and they, they say, you're entitled to be scared. You know, we are here to make sure that everything's okay. And we're gonna look after you. Also the community um, fundraising for Wyoming Hospital was always quite a highlight. One of our lady friends uh, from Medical Records she organises an ex-medical records Christmas party every year where we have up to 20 people come that all worked in the hospital for the last over that 40 year period, which I'm really thankful for. It's lovely having good friends. The people I've met there and helping people, everybody comes to me, like all the younger people, like well, everybody's younger than me. I get great satisfaction. They, they smile and thank me and I walk away. No, I think I, think I found my niche in life. I love my work, yeah, it's a challenge, um, but you know, I, I just don't know what I would do if I didn't have it in a way. Oh, it's unreal place. That's why I love it so much. I really do love working here.